Welcome to our video. The world is less democratic when journalists are less safe. Attacks on press freedom are a global problem. I would like to focus on the opinion in the Dallas Morning News. Dated the 15th of April 2023. The world is less democratic when journalists are less safe. Attacks on press freedom are a global problem. The recent arrest of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich by Russian authorities reflects President Vladimir Putin's particular hostility toward any semblance of press freedom. But it also underscores the increasingly difficult conditions experienced by journalists around the world. Attacks on the independent press have been fueling a 17-year global decline in political rights and civil liberties, according to Freedom House's annual Freedom in the World report. Since the beginning of this period, freedom of the media and freedom of personal expression have declined more rapidly than any of the other indicators covered by the analysis. In fact, there has been a shocking increase in the number of countries and territories that receive a score of 0 out of 4 for media freedom. In 2005 the total stood at 14, but by 2022 it had ballooned to 33. Cases like those of Gershkovich and Jamal Khashoggi, the U.S.-based Saudi journalist who was murdered in 2018 by agents of the Saudi government, tend to draw the most attention. Yet journalists living and working in every region of the world are subject to a daunting array of threats that can make it nearly impossible for them to properly inform the public and hold the powerful to account. The Committee to Protect Journalists found that 67 journalists and media workers were killed in 2022, a nearly 50% increase from 2021. Nine journalists were killed last year in Haiti alone, according to the Inter-American Press Association, as security there has deteriorated since the assassination of President Jovenel Moyes in July 2021. The most recent murder occurred in December, when radio journalist Franklin Tamar was gunned down near his home in Port-au-Prince. Fifteen media workers have died covering Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, a U.S. citizen, was shot dead in January 2022 while reporting on an Israeli raid in the West Bank, with Israeli military officials later claiming that a soldier had misidentified her despite the fact that she was wearing the items marked press and standing with other journalists. Just last month, five journalists in Ecuador were mailed USB sticks that contained a military-grade explosive substance. Physical threats against journalists are only the tip of the iceberg. Increasing state control of media outlets, digital harassment, Spyware attacks and economic pressures are all undermining the ability of the news media to provide honest, transparent reporting, and eroding an indispensable bulwark of democracy. The lowest scoring countries in Freedom House's report include some of the most repressive media environments in the world. Consider Belarus and Saudi Arabia, which both scored an abysmal 8 out of 100 and are rated not free in the latest edition of Freedom in the World. In Belarus, the government of President Alexander Lukashenko, a close Putin ally, has blocked access to more than 100 news sites and imprisoned at least 30 journalists since claiming victory in a fraudulent presidential election in 2020. In Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has been credibly accused by U.S. intelligence agencies of approving the operation that resulted in the death and dismemberment of Khashoggi, a Washington Post journalist and U.S. resident, at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. In other countries where brutal repression is now taken for granted, such as Russia, attacks on the media were among the first warning signs of a broader decline in freedom after years of comparative openness. One of Putin's first acts after becoming president in 2000 was to forcibly bring NTV, a major independent television network, under the control of Gazprom, the state-owned energy conglomerate. Since then, the Kremlin has introduced a barrage of laws on extremism, foreign agents and undesirable organizations that have led to the exile or closure of almost all independent media outlets in the country. Last year, honest domestic reporting on the war in Ukraine became untenable after the regime revised the criminal code to prohibit dissemination of false news about the Russian military and instructed media outlets to refrain from using words like war and invasion. Gershkovich's arrest is not the first sign that association with the prominent foreign news organizations provides no protection in Russia. Well-known Russian dissident Vladimir Karamorza, a Washington Post opinion writer, is facing a long prison sentence for spurious treason charges based on his opposition to the war. Prosecutorial crackdowns on media outlets have also been a hallmark of Beijing's demolition of civil liberties in Hong Kong since it imposed the draconian national security law in 2020. 
Hong Kong authorities have used the law to arrest and prosecute a prominent media owner and force the closure of many independent outlets. At the end of last year, six staff members from the pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily pleaded guilty to dubious charges that they had conspired to collude with external forces against the Chinese and Hong Kong governments. But this phenomenon is not confined to overtly repressive settings. Freedom House recorded assaults on media freedom in 157 countries and territories last year. While reporters targeted by the world's most brutal dictatorships are certainly in acute danger, journalists in countries rated free or partly free by Freedom House's annual report frequently face a wide range of obstacles. In Guinea-Bissau, for example, more than 70 radio stations were temporarily closed by decree last year, ostensibly for non-payment of a license fee. The privately owned stations were a crucial source of information for many residents, especially amid a worsening political crisis that included an alleged coup attempt in February and the president's dissolution of the parliament in May. In the Solomon Islands, the government effectively took over the public service broadcaster, the Solomon Islands Broadcasting Corporation, saying it would vet all news programs before they could be aired. The power grab came after the SIP reported on violent protests by citizens calling for the resignation of the prime minister and aired criticism of the government's increasingly close ties with Beijing. In some democracies with a history of strong free speech protections, media freedom has come under threat from private actors. British journalists who report on global corruption, highlighting the links between kleptocrats in Russia and Central Asia, have endured extremely costly lawsuits over the past several years. Only recently has the British government taken action to stem the tide of these so-called slap, strategic litigation against public participation, cases, which have long been used to discourage legitimate reporting on issues of public concern. Digital harassment and the use of spyware against reporters is also on the rise, including in countries with otherwise high levels of press freedom. Women journalists face relentless online abuse that is often disturbingly personal, gender-specific and anchored in sexual violence. A survey conducted in the Netherlands last year found that more than 80% of female journalists had experienced some form of intimidation or threat online. Online harassment discourages reporters from working on specific topics, leaving voters in the dark and wrongdoers in the clear. A quarter of the reporters in the Dutch survey said they avoided covering certain subjects because of the harassment they had encountered. Spyware, which has grown in power and sophistication in recent years, can surreptitiously turn an individual's phone into a listening and tracking device. In 2021, more than 180 journalists were on a list of targets for Pegasus, a spyware product developed by an Israeli company that can install itself on a phone without the user having to click a link in a fraudulent email or text. It affected journalists in countries including France, India, Spain, Mexico and Morocco, endangering them as well as their sources and contacts. Such surveillance can facilitate physical attacks and have a chilling effect on investigative journalism in particular. Journalistic work is becoming more difficult even in the United States where the media have become entangled in a nationwide trend of political polarization and extremism. Journalists are at greater risk of physical attacks while reporting in such a climate, as a growing proportion of the public shares former President Donald Trump's view that the media are an enemy of the people. According to a recent study, Half of the Americans surveyed thought that most national news organizations intended to mislead or misinform. While a free, vibrant, and an independent media sector cannot guarantee on its own that democracy will thrive in a given country, no democratic system can survive long without one. Independent journalists hold leaders accountable, shed light on corruption and abuses of power and ensure that voters can make well-informed decisions. This is precisely why reporters are so frequently the first victims of authoritarian regimes, and why attacks on the media should be heeded as a warning of much worse to come. Michael J. Abramowitz, a former Washington Post reporter and editor, is president of Freedom House. Yana Gorakovskaya is Freedom House's research director for strategy and design. They wrote this for the Dallas Morning News.